Elftel vertaal en chind ge Elftel Chalmenza. Hello and welcome. My name is Joe and I am the Panic Monk and I am going to be doing something that I had meant to do a long, long time ago. And that is show you how I interpreted Dwemeris to how I interpreted English to Dwemeris. Okay, so first, I think what I need to do is to bring you to where I got my inspiration. So let's go on to the tubes. Let's go to, I don't know, let's go to my channel and we'll just grab, nope, not that one. Let's grab that one. Any one of these will do. Any one of these should do. And show more. So, in the show notes of any of my Lost in Time series videos, there should be a complete list of stuff. In that stuff should be this here. Sulian on SoundCloud. This was my inspiration for trying to translate Dwemeris on my own. This, this gave me the, the idea of adding that element into this Lost in Time series because I was going to play a Dwemer. So, let's start out with this. This is actually um, a pretty amazing um, piece. Kun tuamer achin khin du atan te varn dam. Ams tuamer achan khmel zu kon da kamura te twang zark te dum mel zu tuap tarn. Te kantan du achan zin du astur pdarum zu tuam merzel. Abach du marken tu atum zamakai te abach abatlag kagun tuam kint zan. Du khalfal nyak khe du fal du nur. Du khalfong yaft khed dunu. Du bakhal to bazun khu du abtar khu du ankhard. Te ur du ankhut irkin u irkin deftarin thung khals. Dun bak du amzwa den khwan dorkin khun fal dar du ankhad khamrals. Te afta du khendrat kagren du vangt nimt. Stop! Stop! Alright, so. That was the inspiration for me to try and uh, create my own form of Dumeris. Now, uh, she is obviously pronouncing some of the letters differently. Um, in particular, I believe the CHs or the Ns are more silent and have a more of a, a kind of a back of the throat kind of sound that you might get in, oh, I don't know. Um, say Hebrew or maybe some of the Arabic languages, but uh, I'm certainly not a, a linguist by any means, so I, I can't really delve into her interpretation uh, from that point of view, but that was where I started from. So the next piece is this one. Is this the right one? Uh, sort of. This is actually not entirely what I was looking for. Um, let's go all the way up. No, not Nordic. What we really want are... Not Xarxes. Um, Old Mary. What do we got here? Old Maris. This one. Not that one. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just easier to do it like this. There. 
we go. This is actually what I wanted here. This guy right here, this, this grid, this table, whatever you want to call it, on the Imperial Library. This is where I got all of the letter sounds for English. Ah, uh, but the lich, and eh, f, ngth, ah, uh, these a and h are actually really. I I struggled throughout the whole series with these two letters because I ended up making them sound very much alike. Which I don't know. I I tried to give this more of a ah and this more of an ah. Or vice versa, I don't remember quite honestly, but I tried to distinguish them with, uh, you know, the the sound of the A um, that's in each of these. But anyway, this is where I got my my sound my sounds from. So A B C D through G or through G. Yes, I only use this much um, A through Z. Here's our alphabet uh, that you will see in some of the videos in some of the books uh, that I read from. So this is the general this 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 is the basis for uh, the Dormaris language that I used in that series. So how did I do that? Well, at first, I wrote down things I wanted to say, right? Let's just do this real quick. Hello. So how does that translate? Well, H, let's look across, is it A-H? And E is E-H. And L is... LFT, there's two of those, LFT, O, O, W. That was really tedious. So what I decided to do was make a way that could automate that process. Uh, so this would, let, let's see how I go about pronouncing this. A, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a. A lift, a lift, lift tau, a lift, lift, a lift, lift tau, something like that. Anyway, back to that later. So what I ended up doing, because in my current position, I use Access quite a bit. So I took an Access database and created a little form with a couple little tables to help me translate what I needed or wanted to say. Stop it. All right, let's clear that out. How would I do it? Well, in order to figure that out, we need to go into the design and it's all in the magic of this button called translate. We have an event, so let's look at that event. Here's our code. This is the guts of what is being done to translate English to Dwemer, insofar as my interpretation. So up here, if you're not familiar, is just a list of variables that I am declaring. Dim uh, dimension, I think that stands for. Uh, I don't know exactly why dimension, but um, I guess Google is your friend. You can look it up if you are so inclined. So I'm setting, or I'm not setting, but I'm declaring a bunch of variables. I am setting this to a database object type, and I'm setting these to record set objects. Record sets are very much like um, temporary tables, really, uh, an array perhaps even. So 
then I am setting my DB variable to the current database. So then it just makes it so I don't have to type out so much. So whenever I call some an object that requires the database, I can just type in DB. So now we're setting our record set and we're loading our records. So basically we are filling our temporary tables with this information here. So this record set, rs underscore num, we are getting and filling it with the position numbers from this table. What table is that? Well, that's this one. So what we're doing is we're getting all the position numbers, right? This column. And we're loading that temporary table, that array with just these numbers, because we're going to use them later. And we're doing the same thing for the other table, this one, we're getting all the position numbers for that. I'll explain why this is like it is and why I just don't simply go from here to here. Uh, I started out that way and quickly discovered that wasn't going to work. Again, we'll explain that later. So, will, I guess, will we being me. Anyway, so we are loading our temporary tables, our arrays, with the, that data. Um, then we are just bumping up to the very first record of those two arrays. And array is probably not the correct term. It probably really is more akin to a temporary table, but array is easier to say than temporary table. So anyway, bear with me. Don't judge. And if you are that bent out of shape because I'm mis labeling something, then go make your own application and tell the world all about it. I'm sure we're all dying to hear how correct you are. Anyway, so moving on, we obviously have a loop and we have another loop and loop and loop and loop. This is why we have these two arrays. We're looping through them to get the values. So what are we doing here? Well, we have a variable and we are setting that variable equal to the first. Remember, we move to the first record to the first record of that array. It only has one column in it. So What's the first record of that array? Dash zero one dash. Oops. That's what we're doing here. Now we're going to go out and we're going to look up what the value in the alpha column is of this table for this position number which remember we just set. So we're looking for the value in the alpha column of the table alpha source table where the position number equals dash zero one dash. Right? Easy enough. Following me yet? Did I lose anyone? A. Seems like a lot of work, right? Uh, it'll make sense. And then we are taking and setting this variable equal to the string entered. What is that? String entered. What does that mean? String entered means this guy. String text entered equals value in that text box. Now, 
we've got this little bit in here. If the value of the text box, box is null, then set string text entered equal to an empty string. Null does not equal empty string. Null is null. It's void. It There is no value. It's not zero. It's not empty string. It's nothing. Nulls do not equal empty strings. So we need to set it to an empty string so that the form will behave nicely. Otherwise, if it is not null, use the value that's entered. What is text zero? Well, text zero is a very um, poor choice on my part by letting the default naming convention of the application take over and not calling it anything meaningful. Let's look here. Text zero is the box that we enter text into. Now, if I were doing this in a more professional capacity, I would have given it a meaningful name besides text zero. But it's for personal use and Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. So that's what text zero. So whatever values entered into this text is going to be the value of this variable. So down here, we're going to search this variable. We're going to search the text we entered for this letter. And we're going to replace that letter with that string number. So we're going to take A and replace it with dash zero one dash. And we're going to loop through the entire alphabet and do that for every single letter in that string. So we'll end up with a bunch of dashes and, and numbers instead of English text. And then we're going to move down to the next loop and we're going to look up essentially do the same exact thing except now we're going to look up the position number we're going to find the Dwemer equivalent for that position number and then we're going to replace that position number with that Dwemer translation that's what this neck that's what this loop is doing and it's going to go through 1 through 26, and it's going to replace all of them with the Dwemer equivalent translation. This next block is going to go back through that translated text, and it's going to look for certain vowel combinations, and it's going to assign them a numeric value, dash, 0, 1, dash, 0, 2, etc. Uh, dash, 0, 1, dash, excuse me. It's every number is a two digit, two digit number encased in two dashes. And I'll explain that as I mentioned earlier, why. And then we're going to take the whatever it found and convert it to a dash number dash and reconvert it to the vowel combination we prefer. This is our vowel combination. So, in most cases where we have pairing vowels, like AE, for example, or in this case, let's look at this one. This one stays the same. Sometimes they stay the same. AA, we're just going to keep as AA. However, we've got EAH. H, which means, what do we have here? E, H, E, and an A together. So if we have any combination where E and A are together, we're going to tr translate that from this into this. And the only reason that I'm doing this is because it makes the final pronunciation just 
a touch easier to do. So I'm taking common vowel combinations and in most cases changing them to something that's just a little bit easier to pronounce in the end result. Okay. Whew. So that's our code. That's what that magic translate button is doing. So let's do something here. And I am going to put a page break. What this is going to do is it's going to stop the execution of the code right at this line. So what we can do is take our form. Let's go back to the Oops, what the? Eh. Eh. No. There we go. Our form. Our form. God bless it. Stop. Come on. Oh, shitsky. It already executed. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our form and we're just going to put something in it. So let's put in um, who are you? Now, as soon as I hit this button, it's going to step us into the code because we put that page break in. Now, before we do that, before we do that, Let's do this. Let's put in the word the. All right. What does that mean? Well, let's go to our translation table. The. In Dwemeris, according to the grid from the Imperial Library, the translates into this. So let's go find our T, which is 20. So RT. Our H, which is 8, AH, and our E, which is 0, 05, EH. Rata, Rata, something like that. There's our Domeris. So now you might say, you know, if you're going to go through the entire alphabet, why do you need to have this number? What well, if you're going to go through A, find all the A's and replace them? There's no A's. There's no B's, C's, D's, E's. Great. There's an E. It's going to hit the E. So it's going to loop through. And as soon as it hits that E, it's going to translate it. Great. So we'll end up with something like this. T-H-E-H. -E right? So it's going to convert the E to an E-H. And then it's going to keep going down. Ba, 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 ba. No F, no G, but there's an H. So now it's going to translate all the H's to A-H. T-A-H-E. A-H. Do you see a problem here? On why we can't go directly from the alphabet to the Dwemeris? equivalent because as we loop top down code almost always well code always goes top down now depending on different functions that might be within that code block it may skip out and go grab something different but it always goes top down so going top down a through z we've just changed our word we wanted to keep the e as eh but now it's changed because we were now changing the H, but it found two of them. That's a problem. That's why we went. That's why we have this position number. So let's try this again. The. No A's, B's, C's, D's. E. Found an E. T H. Now we translate it into a dash zero one nope nope five dash 
right? And then it loops through again, no D's, there are no F's, no G's, there's an H, found an H. Now we translate the H, T, and the H is dash zero eight dash. It doesn't find any other H's because every th the E has been translated into a dash zero five dash, right? So it keeps it dash zero five dash. And so on and so forth. Loop, 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 loop. Oh, we hit a T. Number 20. We hit a T. We're going to convert that to a dash 20 dash. And we didn't find any other T's in this word. So we're just going to ignore and keep whatever is there. Dash 8, eight dash dash zero 05 dash. We now have the word the as position numbers. As I showed earlier, why we can't just go from alpha to tuomeris is because it starts overwriting itself as it goes down the alphabet. But if we do it to numbers first, now we don't have that problem because all the letters that have been converted previously to the next letter have been turned into this dash number dash format. So why the dashes? For the exact same reason that we couldn't go from here alpha to here Dwemer, we have to encapsulate our number with some kind of delimiter. I chose a dash. I could have used a pipe. Um, you know, anything that isn't a special character because we would have ended up with the same problem if we had done some if we had tried to do this we would have ended up with the same issue because going top down it would have changed the e to a 5 and then it would have changed the h to an 8 and then it would have changed the t to a 20 in this case it probably wouldn't have been a big deal. However, let's look at a different word such as who. Who, W. W is what? 23, 23. Oh, no, better. What, what, common word. W. Let's change all the W's to a 23. Let's change. So, but first, 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 remember we're working top down. A. One. And then we loop through. And we change all the H's to. We change all the H's to eight. And we change all the T's to 20. And then we change all the W's to 23. Okay. Great. Now we got to convert that to Duomeris. Let's change all the ones to A. Okay, we got a one. There's an A. Now we gotta change all the. So now we have something like this, right? Oops. Two, zero, two, three. Now we keep going down. Now we gotta change all the twos to a B. Now we got two of those. Or not a B. Excuse me. We're changing it back. We're changing it to Duomeris, right? Right, right. Now we change all the twos to a B. A H H eight B T H zero B T H three. Do you see the problem? We're not changing the letters correctly. 
This is why we need the delimiters. This is why we need... These kind of things. 18. That's not right. Anyway. So, let's step through the code a bit, because it'll make a lot more sense. Who are you? Let's translate that. Okay. So, it's already gone down to here. It's already set, not set these variables, but declared them. So, we're good to go. Let's step through this code. String entered equals our text. Here's our text. So, string equals who are you? Now we're going to move to the first record of this record set, which has already been set. Because it's above here, before our, above our break line, it already has been set. This has already been set. This array contains 0, 1 through 26, surrounded, delimited by dashes, as does this. So, who first? We're going to go the first record on this one, and we're going to go the first record on that one. Now we're going to do our first loop here, right? So, while this is not the end of the file, Remember, we're starting on the first record. We got 26 of them to go because we're doing one for the each of the alphabet, right? So it's false. Let's see what it does. It's going to grab the very first record of this array, which should be an A, right? Which is equivalent to 0, 1, dash, 0, 1, dash. All right, and boom, there it is. Now this little snippet here is saying, go get the value that is stored in the alpha column, alpha column, on this table, or the alpha column that is in this table, this table, And set this value equal to what that value is, where the position number equals zero, 01. So again, set this variable equal to the value in this column of this table where this value equals dash zero one dash which is a right get the alpha from this table where the position number equals that a now let's take our text, who are you, and we're going to search it for this letter, and we're going to replace this letter with this number. We're going to search this text for this letter, and replace that letter with this number. We have one in the word R. So when we're done with this row, we should have who dash zero one dash R E U, which is exactly what we get. And it's going to do that for every single letter of the alphabet. If that letter does not exist, it's going to ignore it and keep going. So if it doesn't find a B, it's not going to replace anything. Right? Let's just make sure that's true. Two 
is a B. Replace this text, or search this text for this letter and replace it with this. It doesn't have one, so it did nothing. And it's gonna keep doing that for every single letter in the, the alphabet, or basically every record that's in that uh, table. This one. So, what do we got here? Where are we at? We just did four, and we're still here. So our next letter really in the alphabet should be an E, right? We should be replacing the E is the next one down, which is number five, which is our next sequence. So let's see if it does it. Five, E. What are we gonna replace it with? A zero five, so replace the E for a zero five. And there it is. Who zero one R zero five U. I'm not saying the dashes, but you can obviously see that they're there. So let's just keep looping through this. Eleven. I'm not gonna slowly tab through each one because I think you get the gist of what this block of code is doing. So we've got. 25 and our last one is 26. Now what do we have? We now have a series of letter numbers delimited by dashes to represent the text that we entered. Who are you? WHO 23815 ARE 1, 18, 5, 25, 15, 21. Why you? Who are you? So now we're going to take this and we're going to loop through this again. Okay, we're going to, well, the loop is done. It's now do well, not end of file. Well, it's the end of file. It's true. It's going to skip. Reinitialize this number and do it all over again, except now we're gonna replace the numbers that we just had, the delimited numbers, with the Dwemer equivalent, that one. Right? Bum, bum, bum. Gonna look for all the ones. Remember, we have one one. Replace it, and what do we have now? <gasps> look at that, A-H-H. And we're going to do that for every single number position, 26 of them. We're up to 13. What's it look like now? Okay, we've replaced a H, an A, and an E. So let's keep going. Now where are we? We're at 18. Now we look like that. And we keep going. 22. Ooh, almost there. 24, and we'll just keep going. 25 and 26. And there is our new Dwemer equivalent to Who Are You? This is what I would guess I would consider a phonetic Dwemeris sentence. Phonetic. <laughs> yeah, these are a bugger, I'll tell you that much. Uh, our loop is now done because that became true, that we are at the end of the file. Reinitialize and we do it over again. Now in this series of loops, we're going to convert any of these occurrences on this table doing the exact same method we're going to convert uh, any of these to numbers, and then we're going to convert that number back to this. This is, again, basically just a, a little bit easier pronunciation for some of the common vowel combinations. 
So let's uh, let's just kind of rip. You know, what, let's just go like this. Um, there is one of those combinations, and that is in. Uh, let's see, who are you? Y O U O U. OU is a vowel combination that we are going to search for. So O is O W U H. O W U H. We are going to translate that into O W U U. To just. This is so I, when I'm trying to read this, when I'm recording, it gives me a, a visual signal to, to say it ooh instead of ah. Uh. So this wouldn't be awa, it would be au. Right? That's basically why that's being done. So let's, uh, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's go through. And that is number 24. So we can skip ahead here for quite a bit. Where are we at? 12, 18, still looks the same, 23, 24, okay. Gonna go and get that, which is this. Now we're gonna take our string, we're gonna look for that, and we're going to replace it with that. Boom. There it is. And then we are done. Reinitialize the number and then reverse it. Replace the number with the new translation. So now we start at one. And we go, 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 go until we get to 24, I think it was, 24. Just double check, nope, hasn't changed anything. 25, boom, it changed it. And that is the end of our loop. We have reached the end. And now we just clean up our code after we set text to. What is text to? Text to. We can't get to. I'll show you to in a minute. Um, basically is the other text box. So we're going to enter our new Dwemer text into that second text box. That's what this is basically saying. We're going to close our record sets, our arrays, our temporary tables. We're going to close the database and then we're going to initialize these to nothing. This just helps clean up objects so that there isn't any uh, code and um, I guess memory leaks essentially. We're just cleaning our code up and then done. Oops. Let's end that. Now let's go look to see what we have here. <gasps> there we go. Who are you? So if we want to see that happen a little more instantly. Oops. <laughs> let's let's stop that. Try it again. I really don't. I forgot to take my page break out. Form. Oops. What are we going on here? There we go. Who are you? Oyawa. Oh, Oyawu. The letter, the vowel combinations was something relatively new towards the end of the Lost in Time series. So earlier in the series, you will hear me say Oyawa for you. Uh, later on, I, I added in that little nuance of changing out some of the vowel combinations. So this would be Oyawu. Oyawu. 
Okay, great. So now we've got that. Now we've got to try to figure out how we're going to pronounce that. Cool. How are you? Or who are you, rather? How? We could figure that out. How are you? Oh, these get really tricky. Ow, be kind of a silent ending. Ow, kind of a. It's um. Some of this gets really, really funky, uh, especially when you get long pieces of text, such as um. Oh, I don't know. What do I got here? Let's... I don't know if I have anything I can... I don't have any examples. Let's see if I can find an example. How about this? So if we take this relatively short block of text in English and we throw it into our translator it's going to be crazy long. How's that? There's our phonetic Dwemeris. So, when, on the very few occasions I have a longer piece of text, essentially what I would do is go in and record these almost individually. I would try to say as much as I could, um, more as fluent as I could, but quite often it was very broken, so I would have to go into Audacity, crop that little piece out, and, you know, crop out the spaces and smash them together so that it sounded fluent. Um, converting English to Dumeris, as I did for Lost in Time, was exceedingly time um, time, time, time labor intensive. It took a lot of time, but I think it was worth it. I think it added an element to the story to kind of on occasion remind, remind you that this really was not uh, an elf of that time, uh, that he had his own language, that he would have used that language primarily uh, because, you know, even though there are many countries nowadays that teach and people learn English, for example, as a secondary language and are very good at it, their day-to-day -day routine, they're using their own native tongue. You know, uh, I can go to Germany, for example, which I've been fortunate enough to go there a couple times and many Germans do know English uh, as do many other countries around the world but in their day-to-day -day actions they don't speak English to one another they're gonna use their native language they're gonna use German uh, French Swedish whatever um, Pick a, pick a language. Anyway, that's the breakdown of how I created the Dormeri, Dormeris language for my Lost in Time series. I hope it was interesting and uh, maybe even 
will encourage you to try something different. It doesn't have to be language conversion. You don't have to use access or any other, you know, tool like this. Um, Excel, you could, you could do this probably in Excel. You could do this with T-SQL if you're a Microsoft person. You could use it with PL-SQL if you are an Oracle person. Um, it's a little bit of overkill for those two in particular, but I mean, those enterprise systems are a little bit overkill for this, but it, it could certainly do it easy enough. Um, this is what I happen to have, and this is what I did. So, anyway, that's it. That is it. So, thank you for listening to me ramble on and on and on. And hopefully this won't be too difficult to cut together so that it'll make some sense. And until next time, safe travels. Or, as Sanak might say, Shata Vatarda Vatardav Selfch Shafta Ratuta Telfsh. That's a fun one. Anyway. Good night, goodbye, good morning, good day, what have you. I'll see ya. Talk to you another time. <laughs>